Jo, ej. Et. Ni. Sådan. Ti. Gå. Ruk. Ja. So what we're going to do is, is work this from being grabbed. Yeah. A very common attack, uh, if someone's trying to get the jump on you, so to speak, is for them to grab your lead hand to then punch with the right hand, for example. Most of this kata works on a right hand basis. Yeah. So someone's put a guard up. Guard is to sign it. Someone's got a guard up. If I come in here, they're going to guard. Yeah. So they're looking for the advantage by pulling down that guard and coming through there. So this is a very classic attack. Uh, you'll get this even from, from untrained people. Yeah? Okay, so let's look at the kata as being a response to that particular attack, for example. So when I get grabbed, left hand side forward, this is my first input. And if I sit here and I wait, then I'm bang in his target zone, right? The punch is coming through the center line. So what the kata tells us to do is, as soon as we feel that, to pull off to the side, to 45 degrees. I'm moving away from his other hand. Yeah. So, so as soon as I get that input, I move away. And the kata also tells us trap. Yeah. In the kata, this was, has become a larger, more, let's say, artistic movement. But in reality, we're trapping, trapping, and pulling down. And we're pulling down, down and back. Yeah. We do that not just with our hands, but with our center. We use cat stance to move our center of gravity back and downwards. So this actually is um, a very practical use of, of Nekwashidachi cat stance. Yeah? As soon as we get grabbed, we pull away from that weapon. Right? So we're really going to go down, break this down to the simple level, but I think it's kind of important that we do so potentially. We've been running these exercises in our class here for the last month or so. And the feedback is that actually sometimes the underlying basic skills need to be highlighted before we can put them together into the applications, which is also very, very useful. So in Matsubashiru, generally, when we're working, for example, cat stance, we move forward. We move forward into cat stance. We do that in our linear basics. But actually, what I want you to do now is move backwards and off at an angle. So we're going to move off at an angle, move off at an angle, move off at an angle. So I want you to just do that practice together now, yeah? And we're going to keep the hands forward, right? So when we move off, we pull off from the hip. So we're going to move from the hip, drag back, yeah? And then the other way, hey, shh, knee, sam, shi, go. Okay, come back again so we don't go too far away from the camera. So try not to lead from your legs, but lead from your center, move your center. Your legs will follow with you. Yeah? So itch, ni, san, shi, go. Wait. Good. You guys are generally working by yourselves, but the next step when you have a partner available is to work with a partner so you get the feel for dealing with somebody's obviously weight when they're when they're being when you're being gripped. So for example, heights come out there. Cool. Right. Come out there. Right. Cool. Right. So I do have a size advantage over him. However, what I'm not doing here is using my arm muscles. I'm moving my body. I'm moving my center to to move him, right? Bearing in mind that there's also he's also given me a certain amount of momentum when he grips. Just in the air. <laughs> cool. Yeah. When he grips, he's giving me a certain amount of momentum. But really, I need to move my body. Yeah. Grips again. Hi. Cool. No. Okay. So that's that's the drill, right? Moving your center, moving your center line dynamically, off at an angle. Okay. So that's drill number one. The other one is about catching. Yeah. And this is. In our, uh, so in our um, practice, in our other kata, we have kakie, kakie or kakiuke, yeah, which is a sort of hooking, catching movement. Yeah? We have it in our, it features a lot in our tamari te kata. Yeah? Um, 
So from here, yeah, we want to come over and grasp. Yeah? <coughs> if we just do it one hand, there's still a good chance that we'll catch them, but we improve our chances by just resting, resting the other hand on top, yeah, and grasping. Okay. Then wait. Okay. So if I push, <coughs> excuse me, if I push against his arm, he'll be strong against that. And if I just pull along the direction of his arm, he's also strong in that direction. So this is a circular, circular movement. Without his hand there, yeah, it's a circular movement. You notice my elbow <coughs> stays close to my to my body. Yeah, I want to keep that about one fist distance. So if I if you if you start to do this, if you start to pull with your arm and your elbow, you immediately see that that doesn't work so well. Okay, you can get to practice this a bit more uh, when you have a partner. Yeah. Okay. So that's the next drill. Yeah. Again, even if you're working by yourself, been grabbed. Go to kakyuki. Come up very close to the camera. Kakyuki here. The other hand on top. And then the other side here. Okay. And the other side. Hey, here. Okay. And then other side here. Other side here. Other side here. I'm aligned behind this, yeah? Other side. Yeah. Other side. Other side. Hey. Other side. Good. Also, <coughs> I'm not gripping very, very strongly. There should be, if you grip very, very strongly, you tend to get too tense and lock up. So I'm, I'm just sort of sticking, sticking to, to my partner, but I'm not trying to sort of crush, crush the life out of his arm, right? Right. So, beginning of kata, we have moved off the line of attack, hopefully avoided initially being standing in the target zone, and we've got kakiyuke. Okay, so let's look at a couple of possibilities from that position. Um, a lot of what we're going to look at tonight is going to be joint manipulations. Um, those are always difficult to get in real life, uh, in, in, in high stress uh, situations. Yeah, they're small techniques are difficult to get. However, um, it's still worth practicing them because when you can get them, they can be useful. Um, and the positions themselves are still valid for bigger techniques. And we'll look at, we'll look at that now. Right? So, so we'll come up close to the camera. So we've been grabbed. I've gone in and I've moved to Kakiyuke. Okay. From here, yeah, in the kata now, I hit forward and hit forward. So this hit, the, the striking movement can be clearing and striking here and striking here. But I could also be utilizing just move forward movement. Um, his little finger is somewhat exposed. So there's a possibility that I can take that finger and drive it back towards him. Yeah. So as I come in for the kakiyuke, I look to grasp the little finger and drive it back towards him. So my movement, this one is pushing the little finger and this one's striking. Yeah. So if we could look at that, it's ni san. One more time. It's ni san. Yeah. So obviously I'm being a little bit kind here, but in reality, take that little finger and drive it right back. Yeah. To, to inflict damage there. Yeah. So from here, it's ni san. Okay. But like I say, sometimes it's pretty hard to catch something that small in the heat of the moment. He's grabbed me and he's going to punch. I need to cover. So my basic movement needs to be able to just cover me against a very fast, aggressive attack. Yeah. Grab. Yeah. Right. From here, clear and strike. Okay. So I'm not pursuing, not pursuing trying to control him with this, with this lock anymore. Okay. And maybe I got some advantage from that, but I'm not going to try and fiddle with that while he's punching me in the face. I'm going to cover my side. 
here, down, and strike through. Yeah, very, very simple and straightforward. But what's important is still the, the body movement. If I didn't move offline, his punch is going to get to me all the, all the faster. Yeah, as soon as he's grabbed me, I'm moving off behind, behind those two hands together. Yeah. Time. Pitch. Wait. Yeah. Okay. So, appreciate that you're by yourselves, but let's just drill that that movement a few times with that kind of intention in mind. Yeah. Think about now covering. Yeah. So as you pull back, cover. If you can get the lock, that's great. But we want to move in and strike, right? Cover, move in and strike. Yeah. So just uh, just drill that um, a few times yourself. Right. So, so, so. We'll go punch you. Okay. So, next question. My question. So, 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 Good stuff. Good, good, good. Okay, so we've gone from here, here, one, two. The next movement, yeah, has us move up into this um, kind of jujuke, a jujuke type position. We're going, going into Nekarashidachi, but we, we change our orientation. Typically, when we see this kind of movement, yeah. Um, you see this in, for example, in Pinang Kata as well, Pinang Godan. Um, typically, in our dojo, we interpret that as driving up and underneath the other person's arm. So it looks something like this. Uh, yeah. Bunch coming in, here, driving up and underneath. So this is a rising arm bar where I'm usually attacking the elbow. Sometimes when I'm deeper, yeah, I might be into the armpit. Yeah. So bunch coming in. Fall underneath, yeah, and come through and drive. There's also the possibility there right, that I come in with the uppercut, go for the face, and then continue to try and drive through and catch the arm. Yeah. In the kata in Chinto, we've turned our orientation. We're looking the other way. Yeah. So one more time. It's it's cool. Yeah. And again, it's it. And we change our orientation. Okay, go on. So, kata, one, two, three, four, and then five and down and drive through. Okay. So, we have this rotational energy. We're going to use that to bring them around, um, either bring them around us or go underneath the arm. Yeah, so um, we started with, with the attack. It's eight, knee, okay. Other hand coming, sun. Okay, from here, you go underneath here, right, and pull down. Yeah, right. And one more time, just a punch. It's eight, eight, underneath, and pull down. Here, yeah. Okay. Cool. Itch. We could also bring them around, bring them around and down, drop. Yeah. So if you are working against a taller opponent, you're probably more likely to, to be maybe more likely to go underneath here and look for this takedown here.
If it's a little harder to go underneath, maybe they're more shorter and squat, then I'm going to bring them around and down. Yep, down to this position. So we're le leveraging, let me get those lines, leveraging against their elbow. Yeah, leveraging against their elbow when we come in and bring them down this way. So we just work that kind of just as, just as a movement. Yeah. Um, we're going to step through, then we're going to go underneath and come down this way. Yeah. So step through, raise, then go underneath and end up pointing the same way. All right. Step through. Yeah. Come underneath and drop them down in front. So, 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 so. so. Yeah. Let me come underneath. In order to get underneath, we need to have created the space. And this is why the, the raise, the arm bar there, is what hopefully will bring them up on their toes so that you have that instant to go underneath and then pull them down to the ground. So again, one, eight, change, two, underneath and down, yeah? One, eight, then underneath and down, okay? So, so, so. Okay. So we look at that combination again. Grab. Right. It's one, two, three, four, and bring them down. Okay. Right. Mikata. It's ni san shi. Go. Then we pull back, hey, and jump, and drive.